Can you make money off short films? You can. <laughs> that was always my uh, my curiosity back when I was still unsure. Where, what's the future of short films? I don't really understand where, where they can be distributed. Um, the obvious answer was YouTube. You can absolutely put them up on YouTube. Now, I think most many people understand the uh, parameters of YouTube. You have to have something like 4,000 watch hours on your channel and at least 1,000 subscribers, I believe it is, before you can monetize. And then once you monetize, you can play ads, you know, ads in the beginning and middle. Um, and so you can start monetizing. Now, I'm a, a career in YouTube. I think if you're doing a certain type of content, like let's say vlogging or tutorial work or, you know, something like that, um, perhaps the hours and the, uh, the expense and the production is a slightly more trimmed down output, you know, whereas you can maybe start turning a more livable profit off of it. For our channel, you know, I certainly have grand designs for where it can go and what kind of income it can make for us. It makes a, a, a respectable, polite income for us right now. <laughs> it's not turning any heads, but I, I it, you know, it's kind of, it's nice to see something come in for short films that we just kind of crafted from our own design and kind of threw up there. I mean, not just threw up, we spend quite a bit of time, um, but you know, it was nothing a month ago and now we put it up and it's gonna make us, it'll just keep making us money in, in perpetuity for as long as YouTube exists and people watch. Have any producers reached out to you because of the success of Diet or your YouTube channel? Yes, and that's, that's really what I would say the, the value add for doing these short films is growing your network and, and growing your network into a, a pool that you might not have otherwise had access to because you're showing our YouTube channel is now more of like a portfolio of our work. Um, as much as it's like our channel of fun, it's also our work. And this is, we're showing off like what we can create. And we've had a few producers reach out to us and be very, very complimentary of the shorts. And I, you know, I like to think that they get to know us a little bit in the making of videos that we post after every short. And that, that goes a long way too. People kind of want to get to know the person they're working with or might work with um, and see that they're nice. I think we're nice uh, people. And, and I think that that's been helpful, both the quality of work and then the making of to get a, to get to get to know us a little bit better um, has allowed us to have quite like a decent little bit of success of people reaching out to us, asking us what we have available, what scripts do we have, like what ideas do we have? And it's been a very different conversation, you know, whereas before, the conversation might have been a teensy bit more nerve wracking where we're like, oh my God, I hope they like this idea. Please, please. I can't believe we got the meeting. Thank goodness. You know, a little bit more like we're at the mercy of this, this meeting that we're taking now, you know, and I'm certainly not like trying to um, say I'm like being greenlit any day tomorrow, but we're having very different conversations with these producers where they know our work and they're like, we love what you're doing. You know, like, why don't let's start talking about something. Let's make some. What do you guys want to make? It's a little bit more open like that. And I mean, isn't that the dream to sit next to someone who can kind of greenlit your project and they're saying, what is it that you want to make? You're like, oh, what am I? let me tell you, <laughs> you know, and then we have all our ideas and, and we, we then go into the pitch. So it's pretty exciting. And these are people who approach you via email or they also approach you on social media? Um, no, they, they approach us via email. Oh, so wow. that's been okay. that's been really great. Yeah. And yeah, Very just cool. we'll see what the future holds there. What tips do you have for others on making short films? I think I, I kind of, uh, I, I have like my at home jargon that I use. And so I kind of call some of our shorts home brewed, which doesn't, it kind of, I think maybe sounds negative, but it just means, you know, what's something Aaron and I can shoot at home, very little money. You know, we don't need to order any big set pieces. We don't have to hire any big professionals to come do anything for us. He's got his camera. I can be the actress. What can we do like that? So that's what I call like our home brewed shorts. And then I call the other ones like our tent poles, like the ones that are like, okay, we need to get a professional special effects artist over here. We need to create this giant set piece. You know, like those are like the bigger leads. I see a lot of filmmakers living in this world, the tent pole shorts, and that's great. You know, you, you do need several of them. Try not, my advice would be not to tie up all of your time and resources and money only here in the tent poles cast more uh, you know, irons in the fire by doing some more smaller stories. You can still have a lot of quality. You can tell great stories. If, if horror is your game or it, you know, whatever your, your genre is, you can tell great tight stories in shorts that are homebrewed and, and you know, put yourself in a more of a creative box. Like, okay, 
I'm going to challenge myself for this short to only spend a maximum of $20, you know, and perhaps that's just going to be your Chipotle order for the day or whatever. Um, but you can absolutely, you can absolutely do it. And even if it means you only have your cell phone to shoot on, put yourself in that box. Okay. That's my resource. I only have my, my phone. So that means I'm probably going to be limited, probably to sort of found footage style. Okay. Let me write a, a tight little short that's in that box. What, what's kind of new on a found footage that I can shoot in a homebrew category and save my resources for just maybe a few, like a smaller amount of these tent pole shorts. You know, that way you're, you're constantly brewing things. You have your big ones, your, your crowd pleasers, you've got your other ones that are still thrilling and exciting, uh, but you're constantly putting out content, you're constantly crafting uh, your, your skills, you're really sharpening that by working more frequently. You have a marketing background? I do, yes. How has that helped with creating content on YouTube? Well, my background, it come, you know, when I was in college, I kind of went for PR and advertising. And then my first job, I was able to just launch into branding. And, and branding was everything. That ended up being the, you know, wax on, wax off of my, of my career, where all of a sudden I think I'm just building brands for and logos and little website, you know, smaller websites for small companies. And then, you know, one day you realize, you know, karate and you can launch your own production company with your own slick, cohesive branding because you've been doing this for years with other people. And now you get to follow your passion and like be a filmmaker. Um, so my brand, my brand background, my marketing skills lean pretty heavily in both technical and uh, I would say in other area that's a little bit harder to quantify, but it's confidence. So because I feel so confident. I've been doing this for so long. I've pitched, I've made press releases. I've done it all. I'm like, Oh, our channel, no problem. I'll email anyone. Like I have this confidence to me because I know the metrics. I know exactly what to read. I know exactly what, if I want to secure a brand deal, what the uh, cost per milli should be. You know, it's like that information is constantly up here and it's always present in my mind. And so I do think that that branding transcends to our features, our production company and our YouTube channel. It's, 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 is omnipresent the right word? If No, omni is only for God, but you, you understand. <laughs> I was like, I shouldn't say omnipresent for marketing. Marketing is not God. <laughs> when you were in Maryland and you were, you were I think that's where your first job was, yes, right? after yeah. you had attended college, did you ever envision that you'd be in LA doing film? Oh my gosh, film? no, I didn't. I mean, I, I could have only dreamt to do that. Like, the, so when I was in college, I, I, you know, your passion, you know, you, you kind of know secretly what your passion is, even if you're too afraid to pursue it. I didn't have any idea how I could make a, a financial, like a living, a sound living in filmmaking. I don't even know. I wouldn't maybe to even be an actress then. Like, how am I going to break through all the noise and become an, an actress who can actually pay her bills? Complete unknown there. So in college, I thought, well, I can still be kind of creative in advertising. Advertising, I might be lucky enough to work at an ad agency and craft commercials, you know, and maybe I can, uh, you know, storyboard some commercials. Maybe I can like script some of them. That would have been at the time my highest possible thought that I could have achieved, which I think now kind of sounds a little sad because I should have always believed in myself and believed that anything was possible. But there's just the hard truth of reality. Like, no one else is going to pay my rent. I need, I need to pay these bills. Like, and, and I need to have savings. Like, that's life. That's the truth of life. It's how am I going to make this living? Um, and so anyways, it, it was kind of like a, a series of unfortunate events that allowed me to even come out to California, the biggest blessing in my entire life. Uh, I happened to get that the company was downsized. So my, my almost entire department was downsized and eventually I was let go. Um, or I guess downsize is the right word. Um, and then it was right around like Thanksgiving. I lived in Baltimore. So like their homes are like, they're called row homes because they're all kind of like squished together. Um, a neighbor had fallen asleep and uh, like while their kid, like something was cooking in their kitchen. So their house went up in flames. No one was hurt, thank God. But my home, my, I rented, uh, was completely destroyed. It was like complete smoke damage. Like er I basically lost everything. And then uh, my car had been completely totaled by the, the company that comes to, you know, uh, get all the smoke damage out of, out of houses. So within the span of like two or three months, I had lost my job, uh, lost my home and uh, lost my car, my transportation. And I'd been doing gig jobs at the time. Oh. So I absolutely needed my car to get around. And, you know, you kind of just look at something like that and you think like, this might be a good time for a fresh start. 
something's telling me it might be time to go higher, like go follow some passions here. Because what's the worst that can happen? I'm I'm already looking at some some rough times. And also keep in mind I was, you know, a bit younger then. So you're a little bit more footloose and fancy free. So I thought New York is pretty close to Maryland. Yeah, you know, I could take a train up there. Um, Miami, okay, I have some family in Florida, that's interesting. And then there was California. I didn't know anyone in California. California, if someone even told me that they visited California, I thought they were the coolest person in the entire universe. The idea that I could live in California, that would have been, that was the brave move. I was like, I must do it. You must follow, do it. It's scary, but do it. So, you know, I packed up what whatever I had that wasn't like, smelled like campfire and my cat and flew across the country. And, and that's, that was it. And it was the best, happiest, just, oh, so, I'm so great. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful every single day that that happened because that allowed me to get into filmmaking and meet some incredible people and have just really like life-changing experiences and, and creativity and, and newness and openness. And of course, meet Aaron, who is my, my partner in all things and really like my godsend when it comes to filmmaking, because what I don't know about filmmaking, he knows. And, and that's been fantastic. And your Instagram hadn't you hadn't grown it at that point so oh, no. you're I think I had like a picture of a hot chocolate and my cat on my Instagram at the time <laughs> that was about it yeah but I at the time I, I was able to take you know my marketing skills and be like okay I think I can be a marketing consultant I've been doing this for this company for a while so let me go ahead and offer this skill and and so I was able to find a client or two to like kind of get some some you know foothold in a, in a business world and that's kind of what I started pursuing when I came out to California. I didn't want to be, I, I didn't even know how to, to do anything else. I was just like, let's just try. Um, and then along the way, you know, obviously I met Jake and Logan Paul and they showed me what social media business could be. And I thought, I can do that. I can try at least to do that. And I started taking that very seriously. And and just, I mean, it, it is a hustle, like, but it's a happy hustle. You know, you're, you're, you're trying things, you're exploring, you're figuring out your own self throughout the process. And, and you know, it's wild and it's fun. And, and then you, you kind of land at this beautiful precipice of filmmaking. For me, something that was my childhood dream that I had tucked away because I didn't think I could ever make a living doing it. And it's still a struggle today, but it's like a happy struggle because I'm, I'm figuring it out and I can see exactly what I need to do and just keep doing it. And over time, you'll, you'll get where you want to go. And so that would be feedback, or I'm sorry, that's like advice I would give to anyone else is just, you know, follow that gut, take a, take a chance and just kind of let, let experiences inform your next choice, you know, and try and roll with it and learn what you can, filter out what you don't need and just keep moving forward. Wow, what a story. <laughs> what a story. Thank you. Yeah, because those are all like major things that are that could make people go, you know, get very depressed. But you decided yeah. to just say, you know what, I'm going to. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's a little bit why I say I was a slightly younger age at the time, because I think if you're maybe older, I don't, I don't want to generalize. Everything's different for other people, but it can the yeah. world can start to feel a little bit scarier as you get oh, older. Yeah. And, and you have to summon more bravery to do things like that. When you're yeah. a little bit younger, you're like, whatever, if I fall on my feet or fall on my butt, I'll just. I don't know, knock on mom's door, hopefully she'll let me in or, you yeah. know, something like that. Um, but, you know, it does take a little bit of bravery and, and it's a really phenomenal payoff. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you.